was on the table. Page open at page 15. You know how anxious your guardian is to prove yourself. Dear Uncle Jack is so very serious. Sometimes he's so serious, I think he cannot be quite well. Says, I am surprised at you. Mr. Worthing's had many troubles in his life. You must remember his constant anxiety about that young man, his brother. I wish Uncle Jack would allow the unfortunate young man, his brother, to come down here sometimes. He might have good influence over him, Miss Prism. You must put away your diary, dear Cecil. I don't even see why you should keep a diary at all. Keep a diary in order to get all the wonderful secrets of my life. If you didn't write them down, you'll probably get it all about them. Memory, dear Cecil, is the diary we carry about with us. Yes, but it usually chronicles the things that have never happened. We couldn't possibly have happened. I believe that memory is responsible for nearly all the three volume novels that Ruby sent us. Do not speak sly in a three volume novel, Cecil. I wrote one myself in my earth. Has you got Charles Paul coming out of the garden? Ah. Dr. Chasm, this is indeed a pleasure. And how are we, Miss Prism? You are just well. Oh, Miss Prism has just been complaining of a slight headache. I think it would do her so much good to have a short film with the part, Dr. Chasm. Oh, with pleasure, Miss Prism, with pleasure. Cecily, you read your political economy and my absence. Horrid political economy, a horrid geography, a horrid, a horrid German. <laughs> Mr. Ernest Worthing has just driven over from the station, Miss. Mr. Ernest Worthing, B for the Albany. Uncle Jack's brother? Yes, Miss. And he said he was quite anxious to speak to you. Privately, for a moment. <laughs> Ask Mr. Worthing to come out here. Yes, Miss. I have never met him in a person before. I feel rather frightened. I'm so afraid he'll look just like everyone else. Yours. Oh, my little cousin Cecily, I'm sure. You, I see from your card, my Uncle Jack's brother, my wicked cousin Ernest. Uh, I'm not wicked at all. You mustn't think I'm wicked. If you are not, then you've certainly been deceiving us all in a very inexcusable manner. I hope you're not leading a double life, pretending to be wicked and being really good all the time. That would be hypocrisy. Well, I have another reference. I'm glad to hear it. In fact, I've been very bad in my own small way. Cecily, you're the prettiest girl I ever saw. I don't think it would be right for you to talk to me like that. Miss Prism says all good looks are a snare. They are a snare that every sensible man would like to be caught up in. You are too much alone, dear Dr. Chasm. You should get married by persistently remaining single. A man converts himself to a permanent public temptation. Oh, Mr. Worth, this is indeed a surprise. We did not expect you to on Monday afternoon. Dear Mr. Worthing, I trust this garbled wolf and that dog is a terrible comment. My brother. Still leading his life with pleasure? Yeah. <coughs> he died abroad in Paris, in fact. I had a telegram last night from the manager of the Grand Hotel. You would not doubt we should make some slight allusion to this tragic domestic affliction next Sunday. My preaching on the uh, service and the monarch can be adapted to almost any occasion. Have reached our harvest celebrations and christenings and festival days and birthdays. Reach and christenings? Mm. I suppose you know the christening all right. Is there any particular infant you have in mind, Mr. Worthing? It's not very charming, Doctor. The fact is, I'll have to be christened myself. This afternoon, if you have nothing better to do. Not at all. Well, um, what time does she shoot you best? We're half past five. Admirably, admirably. <laughs> oh, and uh, Mr. Worthing, I'm no longer to the uh, House of Sodom. Uncle Jack! I'm so pleased to see you back. What horrid clothes you've got on. What is the matter, Uncle Jack? I oh, do look happy. I've got such a surprise for you. Who do you think's in the dining room? Your brother. Who? Your brother, Alice. He <laughs> writes about half an hour ago. I'll tell him to come out. These are joyful times. <laughs> to apologize for all the trouble that I put you through, and to tell you that I intend to lead a better life in the future. Uncle Jack, you're not going to refuse your own brother's hand. Nothing would. 
loosely take his hand. He's coming down, he's disgraceful. He was perfectly well washed. Uncle Jack, if you do not shake hands with Ernest, I will never forgive you. This shall be the last time I have to do it. Well, it's so perfect, is it, not to see so perfect a reconciliation with so perfect a handshake? I think we might need to two brothers alone together. 